heartwarming to see all your pictures this morning. And if you haven't furnished your picture, to see your name. I think many of you have seen the Christmas classic movie, The Christmas Story. Do you remember Ralphie and his brother as they approached Christmas, hoping for the Red Rider, Red Rider BB gun? I'm thinking of the scene when the boys are on the school grounds during recess, when someone dares someone else to put his tongue on the flagpole. There is protest, of course, but that is countered by, you're scared, aren't you? You're just scared. That question was common in my childhood and maybe yours as well. There's a deep cultural heritage we share as a country which made its progress when its citizens moved ahead with unknown futures. Nobody wants others to think they are scared, it seems. And in some circles, it's a personality fault if you are scared and there's pressure to overcome it. But even if no one admits their fear. We know that fear indeed comes to us all. We've all been quarantined for more than a month now, and I've had plenty of fear come knocking at my door. I imagine that we all have it to one extent or another. Fear is just a fact of life. It won't be ignored. Just try and it comes back with a vengeance. But enough with my negative words. I believe I've been given the gift of extra fear so that I can grow spiritually from working with it. I have not conquered it, far from. But I do work with it every day. I am on the path, that's all. I'll share some experiences here and then in the feedback time, I hope to hear yours. I don't pretend that the same work applies to everyone, but if you are working with fear, I trust spirit to show you your way. First of all, I respect fear. I know it can be very powerful. I respect its power, but it is within my scope to be more powerful. And herein, I have the chance to feel my own power and to respect that. I look at fear the way I look at any other thought. It can come knocking at my door. And I have nothing to do with that, as all thoughts can come to us uninvited. Yet, it is at my door. So I have the right to open the door or not. So now I take time to hear the fear just as I would politely listen to an unexpected visitor. But after I listen, then the fear must listen to me and my reply. If it does not listen, in my head I'm talking about, if it keeps talking to me, if fear keeps taking me away from my own thoughts, then I do not listen. I close my door and I turn my back. Now you and I both know this is just a picture in my mind, but it is imperative that I get to speak my truth. And sometimes it's a reasoned argument that makes the fear just depart. If I don't feel strong enough to get my thoughts straight, then I write my answer as to why I will not entertain that fear. If you have no reason about why you won't listen to the fear, it's okay to close the door anyway and to just turn away. After all, it is your mind and you have the right to rule it. Now, if the temptation to entertain fear is too strong, then you must take it to writing. No fear can stop you from writing what is in your head. And writing helps me to make a conscious decision in order to stop the discussion from the many voices in my head. 
There is an amazing teaching about Jesus that I believe is underrated and mostly taught wrong. It is the temptation of Jesus, which comes in the Bible before he begins his own teaching. He goes out to the desert to pray and meditate so he can be alone and consider the path ahead of him that he may begin soon. It is told in a parable, if you will, or a drama. I don't believe it literally, but you can if you like. The meaning is the same, whichever you choose. Jesus feels tempted to do three things which would probably have put an end to any effective teaching he might do in the future. It doesn't matter for my purposes today what those three were. The point is that they felt real to Jesus and he needed to leave behind those fearful thoughts. How does he do that effectively? His famous words were, get thee behind me, Satan. And that did it. I hope we can all keep in mind here that Jesus was not talking to a monster in a red suit with a long tail. These caricatures were created long after his time. Jesus literally says to the fearsome thought in his head, a poser, that's what Satan in the Hebrew means, or any who oppose me, Jesus is saying, you may not even stay in the field of my view. I turn now my back on you and your temptations. This is the end of our conversation. I imagine we all have fears in our lives at all times, but especially at this time, we have fears that speak and speak loudly. Fears that knock on our mind's door first to beg to be heard, and then they beg to become important. They beg to be obeyed and then to be embraced. Do you see how insidious a thing fear is? If fear is given any footing at all, it grows. It takes over to become anxiety and then panic and worse. I have found that the direct approach works best for me. But there are different kinds of fear and it has as many ways as there are people of getting power in our lives. Here are a few experiences I've had and things that I know about fear. My mother and I had a difficult relationship, so I had a lot to learn from her. She took a lot of control in my life, and often I let her. She did me a lot of good, but failed to be respectful of my adulthood for a long time. Now that she has passed on, I still think of her, and her voice speaks to me. Again, some of this is good and helpful, like how to eat a complete protein without eating meat. But some of her words bring me her anger and her fear. And when it does, sometimes I have to say aloud to myself, I will not be afraid of my dead mother. You see, it's not always enough to ignore fear. Sometimes I have to say in my own way, get thee behind me. And the more this happens, the more I come to believe in my own strength and the more I feel confident of my own power and my own life. I remember the first time in my life I was told I might have cancer, so I would need to have another test. Wow, my fear factor shot up to the ceiling and down again. Oh no, I said to myself, I may not get to accomplish what I had wanted to in my career. I may not see my child grow up. I let my thoughts take my mind on a wild ride to nowhere. My emotions got close to the surface and I would vacillate between, I'm sure I have cancer, to no chance do I have it. Every waking moment was distracted. I was distracted from my life. 
in a fog of fear and far from experiencing any joy, peace, or true love. That was me because I had invited fear in my door. I had taken it to my table. I had fed it not only tea and crumpets, but meal after meal and snack after snack. And I was depleted because of it. The worst thing was that I didn't know there was another way. I thought there was no way to get through this time, but to go through all the beatings I got from fear. I was beaten up every time I woke up in the morning. My emotions were beaten up hour after hour of fear and dread. I was beaten up psychically from anxiety and panic. And when I finally got the news that I had no malignancy, I didn't even have the life and energy to rejoice. Fear had become my constant companion and I actually missed the companionship. I think now, what a waste of my time. I could shame myself for participating but I was never taught in my 40 or so years when this happened that this pain in my mind could all be avoided. All the human beings who had known me had had the same experience of being carried away by fear. And no one told me, at least effectively, that the God I already believed in would not want her children to be miserable and could definitely give me some help. So since then, I made a rule for myself. No thinking about a future that is not yet known. It is okay for me to anticipate and create positive things, but the negative is in no way helpful. In fact, Creating negative possible outcomes steals my life away from me and makes me miserable. And that is no longer a scenario I accept for myself. There are plenty of other ways that fear tries to take power that is not helpful. Reading the news is an exercise for me in recognizing fear and standing up to it. People with authority and no authority are making predictions. People with science and no science are talking about dates and ways to reopen the country. People with true know-how and those with no experience whatsoever are floating ideas about what's next and how dangerous it could be in the future to stop social distancing. This situation is a lot like the experience of getting a medical test. I don't know until I've been told what is, what is going to happen. Literally, no one knows the outcome, especially me. Absolutely no good can come of ruminating on a possible negative future. For me, I know that spending any time whatsoever on prediction is not productive. So I'm not going to go there. It's not my job to know, although I will stay reasonably informed. It will not be productive for me to ruminate about one scenario or another. It is productive for me to stay in the present, to plan today, and maybe next week as best I can. Now, I've listened to many talks or sermons throughout my life, probably 52 of them times 60 years, and I don't remember many of them. The ones I remember have something in common. They left me with two or three phrases that can be easily remembered. So even if your mind is completely different than mine, 
even if you couldn't relate to anything I brought up here. Now I offer you this. We are all going through a time that demands a lot of us. So these three things I would advocate. One, quiet yourself in order to embrace reality. In, the, in that, remember that nothing in the spiritual world has changed. Nothing in the spiritual world has changed. Secondly, do whatever you have to to get yourself in a good place. Put on your own oxygen mask, if you will. And then number three, do for others. If you're someone with free time now, remember that you have been given a chance here to give more love than ever before. Let us remember that fear is in our culture and it's not easy to run away from. But working with fear can make us more confident, happier, and more useful people. It's been a source of spiritual growth for me and that's what we are about here at the center in Ann Arbor. <clears throat> I'd like to invite you to sing a song with me just now. The words are, I know this rose will open. I know this fear will fade away. I know this soul will unfurl its wings. I know this rose will open. Mm -hmm. appreciate the chance to share this part of my spiritual journey. Now it's time for you to share your thoughts. You can write your comments in the chat on your video or raise your hand by clicking that option online or you can literally raise your hand in your video picture. I thank you in advance for your willingness to take part in a discussion now that could help us all open and grow. <clears throat> 